In this video, we are going to have a look at how refresh token works, how the password grant authorization flow works, and how to implement single sign-on in Keycloak using GitHub as an identity provider. This is part 4, the final part of the Spring Security OAuth 2 with Keycloak series. If you are joining me for the first time, you can check out the previous 3 parts of this series in the description section. So without any further delay, let's start the video. So let's understand what is refresh token and how it works. In the previous videos, we saw how the authorization code flow, Pixie enhanced authorization code flow and client credentials flow works. The common thing we can observe with all those grant types or, or authorization flows is when we request a token from the authorization server, the server will respond with an access token and a refresh token. The access token is usually short lived and will be expired after the certain time time after a certain time limit in those cases we need to ask our authorization server to send us a new access token without asking the user to log in again this is where a refresh token will help us to generate a new access token so in a nutshell a refresh token allows an application to request a new access token from the authorization server without asking the user to log in again let's have a look at it with an example I'm going to create a new tab inside the Postman client and open the authorization tab and select the option OAuth 2.0. So I'm going to use the OAuth 2.0 option to request a new access token and a refresh token. So for that I'm going to select the grant type as authorization code. So until key clock 11 we can use client credential grant to request a refresh token because that's easier to re uh, request from the from the Postman client, from the HTTP client. But from Keycloak 12 onwards, the refresh token is disabled by default in key for, uh, disabled by default for the client credentials grant. So to request a refresh token, I'm now using the authorization code grant type. So I'm going to also provide the callback URL, which is configured inside our OAuth2 demo time leaf client. So I'm going to copy that redirect URI and paste it in the callback URL section. And I'm going to open the discovery document by going to our realm and clicking on the open ID configuration link. So here I'm going to copy both the auth URL and token URL and paste them inside the postman client. And lastly, I'm going to also provide the client ID and client secret and click on get new access token. This will open a browser window and here you have to provide your user credentials. So I'm going to type them in and once you click on login, you can see an access token inside the response which expires in 300 seconds followed by a refresh token and the expiration time of the refresh token is 1800 seconds. So let's see how to request a new access token using the refresh token. For that, I'm going to open a tab inside the postman client and I'm going to make a POST request again to the same token endpoint. So I'm going to first copy the URL, change the HTTP method to POST and inside the request body, this time I'm going to add the grant type as a refresh underscore token so that our authorization server will understand that we are requesting a new access token through a refresh token. So next I'm going to use the same client ID and client secret we used previously. So I'm going to open the other tab and copy the client ID and paste it inside the request body of this new request and let's also do the same thing for the client secret. And now finally I'm going to create a new field called as refresh underscore token and now I'm going to and now I'm going to open the other tab again and copy the refresh token we received from the authorization server and I'm going to paste it here and click on send. And now you can see that the server has sent us a new access token along with a new refresh token. Here you can see that we have the expiration time of the request token as 1800 seconds. So we can also request a refresh token without an expiration time. So we can do that by adding the scope called offline underscore access to the list of scopes when requesting a token. So let's see how to do that. Back to the first tab where we requested a token using the client credentials grant type. I'm going to add a new field called as scope 
inside the request body and provide the value for this field as open id which is the default scope followed by offline underscore access so when i click on send now you can see that we received an access token and a refresh token but the expiration time of the refresh token is set to zero seconds that means the refresh token will never be expired I feel that having an unlimited expiration time for refresh token is not recommended because if a refresh token is stolen by a hacker, the hacker can use that token to request new access tokens forever. So for this reason, I feel that we have to provide a longer expiration time for refresh tokens but not unlimited expiration time. Okay, so I guess you understood how the refresh token works and how to request and how to use it to request a new access token. Now let's see how the password grant authorization flow works. So the password grant authorization flow is another simpler grant type we have in OAuth 2. So as the name suggests, we will use the password of the user along with the username to request a token. So if you think about it, this is what we are trying to avoid by using OAuth framework. So you don't want to provide your username and password of your Google account to the photo editing application or any third party application. But I guess this was still in use because maybe you want to use it for a client where you have absolute trust. That means you are pretty sure that the client will not store your credentials anywhere in the database, which is not really possible because you cannot have an absolute trust on a system unless you are the one who have uh, developed the system. In a nutshell, we should never use the password grant authorization flow, but let's see how this works through a demo. Before we see the demonstration, we need to create a client which has a direct access grants enabled in Keycloak. So I'm going to open our realm inside our Keycloak admin console and click on clients and let's create a new client. I'm going to give the name for this client as OAuth2 direct grant client and click on save. So we are going to make this a confidential client and make sure to disable the standard code flow and let's only enable the option direct access grant. So if you hover over the question mark symbol, you can see the information that this grant is used when the client wants to use the username or password of the user. And this grant type is also called as resource owner password credentials grant. Okay, now let's save this configuration and we will also get the client secret for this client. So we'll use this shortly. Now let's open the postman client again and let's open a new tab. And inside the tab, I'm going to make a post request to the token endpoint. And for the request body, I'm going to add the first request parameter as grant underscore type. And which is going to be for the value password, followed by the username and password of the user I created in the first part. So it's going to be programming.techie. And for the password, I'm going to provide the value test, followed by the client ID and client secret. For the client ID, I'm going to provide the value as OAuth2 direct grant client. And for the client secret, I'm going to open the browser and, and go to the Keycloak admin, admin console and copy the client secret from the client we created before. And I'm going to paste it inside the Postman client under the client secret field. Okay, that's it. Now we can send, now we can click on send and you can see that we received an access token and a refresh token. Now you also understood how the password grant authorization flow works, but don't use it ever for a production application because this is exactly what the OAuth framework is trying to avoid. So with that note, let's go to the next section that is to implement single sign-on in Keycloak using the GitHub identity provider. In this section, we are going to have a look at how to implement single sign-on functionality using our Keycloak identity server by using GitHub as an identity provider. I'm going to walk you through the process and how it works under the hood. The process is pretty similar no matter which identity provider you choose. So that is either Google, Facebook or Twitter. No matter any identity provider you use, the process is similar. So single sign-on gives us the convenience of using existing accounts in the popular social media websites to log in into any application. In this way, we don't need to register in each and every application we are going to use. I believe that you may have already used this feature a lot. So let's have a look at how the flow works with the help of a diagram. So as a first step, the user will make a request to the client and the client will redirect the request to the authorization server to perform the authentication for, to perform the authorization process. Now, as we already enabled single sign-on using an identity provider, 
the authorization server will indeed forward a request to the identity provider. In our case, it's a GitHub identity server, but it can be any identity server which belongs to Facebook or even Google. Now GitHub identity server will receive a request and will send a login page to the user asking for the user to log in. So once the user logs into GitHub, the user should also provide his or her consent to allow the client application to use GitHub as the identity server. Once this is done, the GitHub server will generate an authorization code and will return it to the authorization server by sending the authorization code as part of the response headers. Now the authorization server will read this code and forward it to the client, which will then redirect it to the initial page which is requested by the user. So now we saw how it works through a diagram. Now let's also see in this in action through the help, the help of a demo. So I'm going to use an existing application as an example to demonstrate this concept. So I already enabled GitHub single sign on in my Keycloak configuration. So I'm going to open localhost 8080 slash home. This is the application we developed as part of the authorization code flow demo. So you can check it. Uh, you can check this out in part one of this tutorial series. So at first we will be greeted with a Keycloak login page once you open the localhost 8080 slash home uh, URL and to the right side you can also see the sign in with GitHub option. So if I click on that button you will now be you will be now redirected to GitHub authorization server and GitHub will now ask us to provide our credentials and log in to their system. So let me add my credentials here. So now if I click on login GitHub will authorize my credentials and will redirect me back to Keycloak server by adding an authorization code to the response header. So our Keycloak server will read this code and redirects to the redirect URI which is configured for this client. So by providing the authorization code which is sent by the GitHub server. And the client will then redirect us to the home page of our application. So this is how the single sign on works. So let's go ahead and configure the single sign on in our Keycloak server. For that, let's open our realm OAuth2 demo realm and click on identity providers to the left side. And now you can see the drop down add identity providers in their select GitHub under the section social. So you can also see the other identity providers like Google, Facebook, Twitter, etc. So once you select GitHub, you will be redirected to an identity add identity provider page. And here we have the redirect URI, which will be used by GitHub to redirect to our Keycloak authorization server after the successful authentication and consent. So that would be the step five in the diagram we just saw a while back. Okay, and in the next fields, we need to provide client ID and client secret of our GitHub application. So for that, I should register our application in GitHub as an OAuth application. So to do that, make sure you log in to your GitHub account. So go to settings and developer settings and in there select OAuth apps and create a new OAuth app. And now GitHub will ask for the details of the app we are going to register. So I'm going to provide the application name as OAuth2 SSO demo and you can provide the homepage of the app. As this is a local application, we can provide the address as localhost 8080. And lastly, we have to provide the authorization callback URL. So for that, let's open the Keycloak portal again. And we already have the redirect URI here. So we can copy this URL and paste it in the authorization callback URL section. And after that, click on register application button. Once you click on this button, it will register our application. And after a few seconds, you can see the client information like client ID. And by default, it will not create any client secret. We can generate a new one by clicking on generate a new client secret button. And now it will ask for a password confirmation once. So type in your password and click on confirm password button. And now you can see the client secret generated for your application. So now we can copy and paste this information into our Keycloak identity provider form. So both the client ID as well as the client secret. So once this is done, click on save. With this, you have configured the external identity provider details in a Keycloak server. So, and that's all we need to do to enable single sign on in our application. So now I'm going to open the source code and run the authorization code demo application. 
I'm on the master branch now as we don't need to write any code in our application to enable single sign-on. It's just uh, everything is configuration on the Keycloak side. So you can check out the link to the source code in the description section. And I'm going to run the demo application.java class which will start the application at port 8080. Now let me open the browser and open localhost 8080 slash home. As we saw in the demo, it will open the Keycloak login page. And now I'm going to click on GitHub. This will again open a login page. If you're already logged in, it will just ask for the consent for the first time. And after a successful login, you can see the home page of the application we started. So that's it for this video. And we also came to the end of the Spring Security OAuth 2 with Keycloak tutorial series. I hope you learned something new from this tutorial series. If you like these kinds of videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel and also share the tutorials with your friends and colleagues. So I will see you in the next tutorial. Until then, happy coding, techies.